G'day everyone. Today I'd like to try something a little bit different. Instead of showing you how to do something like I have in previous videos, today I want to help you get a better understanding of physics by challenging a friend or a family member. We're going to do that with the egg drop challenge. There's only a couple of set things that you need for this challenge. The first one is a raw egg. And the second one is a tape measure so you know how high you're dropping from. The third thing that it's good to have is a challenger. This could be someone in your household or it could be a friend. But if you don't have someone that you can challenge, just try it out, see if you can do it for yourself. Then you want to gather some items from around the house. Now the only thing is, if you are challenging someone else, you want to make sure that you have the exact same items. But this will all be made up from things that you have laying around. For me, I've got a couple of tissues, a plastic bag, cup, uh, one meter of string, some elastic bands, a couple of water balloons, two sheets of newspaper, a couple of skewers, a couple of pencils, a couple of straws, a toilet roll, some tape, which I'm going to limit myself to 30 centimeters of, and some scissors. As I said, the only thing you need to make sure is if you're challenging someone else, you have the same list of materials to keep it fair. Once you've done that, it's all about building. You can set yourself a limit, say 30 minutes to build your contraption, or you can just wait till everyone's ready and then test it out. It's entirely up to you how you run this competition, but consistency is the key. So I'm going to have a go at making a contraption for myself, then I'm going to see how high I can drop it from. Okay, according to my timer, that took about 15 minutes and I've come up with my egg dropping contraption. As you can see, I've got a bit of a parachute at the top. I've got some arms to try and stop it if it falls over with some cushioning. And I'm hoping that this toilet roll at the bottom is going to slow the impact as it hits the ground. I've got a little bit of cushioning around the edge. The next step is to go out, find a bit of concrete and use your tape measure to measure up a little bit of height ready to drop your egg from. I've come outside and just put some markings on the wall at 50 centimetres, a metre, metre and a half and two metres and let's see what happens. I'm going to start off dropping from half a metre in three, two, one. Success. All right, let's ramp up the difficulty and drop from a metre. So far so good, my egg's holding up. All right, let's ramp it up to 1.5. In three, two, one. Whoa. Nope, my egg's still okay. It's holding up better than I expected. My craft took a bit of a beating that time, but the egg's still okay. All right, after some quick repairs, I'm up to the final test, dropping from two meters. In three, two, one. As you can see, I still have one complete egg. I call that a success. My little craft actually worked better than I expected. I was hoping it would survive the lower drops, but I didn't think my egg would survive the two meters, so it's great to see. Let's talk about the science that's happening here. Specifically, what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of force involved in the impact. Now, you may remember me talking about Newton before when we talked about Ublek. Newton appears in all sorts of things to do with science. He was a great thinker. He tells us with his second law of motion that the amount of force equals mass times acceleration. And acceleration is equal to velocity over time. That gives us the equation that force equals mass times velocity divided by time. Now, if we play around with any of those three things, we can reduce the amount of force. So by keeping the mass lower, by keeping it as light as possible, we're going to reduce the amount of force. By slowing down the acceleration or the velocity that it's moving, we can reduce the force. That's why I tried to use the parachute and I had the balloons to try and slow down the velocity that it was moving at. Or if we can increase the time that the velocity change happens over. That's where my crumple zones came in. You may have wondered why I had this octopus looking piece on the bottom. 
My hope was that much like a crumple zone in the car, it was going to increase the amount of time that the change in velocity was spread over, and it seemed to work fairly well. The same with the sticks on the side. I was hoping that if it fell onto the side, the sticks would actually hit and get pushed through, again, increasing that amount of time. So remembering this equation that force equals mass times the velocity divided by time, we know that if we change any of those three factors, we're going to reduce the amount of force and protect our egg. I hope you had fun doing this challenge. I hope you've learned a little bit about physics and forces, and we'll see you in the next video.